Hello. Iterative algorithms provide solutions to nonlinear but very often to linear optimization problems as well. Examples of such algorithms that you might be familiar with are the gradient descent or ascent algorithm and the Newton iteration. They're typically covered comprehensively in any optimization course. It is, however, outside the scope of this class to cover such iterative optimization algorithms, although we'll say a few more things on the topic during the last week of classes. In this segment, we discuss the potential advantages of iterative image restoration. We then describe a simple iterative algorithm. We refer to it as the successive approximations algorithm, which can be used in a straightforward way in image restoration. The formulation also allows for the use of constraints during the iteration process, which incorporate prior information about the original image into the solution process. Using a straightforward analysis, we also derive a sufficient condition for the convergence of the algorithm. Continuing in some sense with the iterative algorithm of projecting onto convex sets we just discussed, uh, let us look at other iterative algorithms that can be used for image restoration. Before we proceed, let's discuss some of the advantages in general of iterative algorithms. The first one is that um, clearly we are not implementing the inverse directly, but instead in an iterative fashion, step by step. The process can be monitored as it progresses, and therefore we can use the number of iterations as a means of regularization. In other words, we can terminate the algorithm at any point that uh, the result is satisfactory for our purposes. Coupled with the above is that the effect of noise can be controlled. The more iterations, the higher the noise amplification, and therefore terminating at, at some desirable point, the noise amplification is controlled that way. And finally, iterative algorithms can in general be applied to cases that the degradation is specially varying or nonlinear. And also, when we do blind restoration, uh, we have to resort to an iterative algorithm. There are a number of available iterative algorithms typically covered in any optimization course, algorithms such as the gradient descent or the various Newton methods. We will talk here about a simple form of an iterative algorithm that has found applications, has proven to be effective in image restoration, but also other image processing problems such as the phase-only or magnitude-only reconstruction problem. So we start by formulating the problem of interest as that of finding the roots of a function phi of f. So f is the image represented as a vector, and phi is, is, is a function that I want to find its roots. So according to this successive approximations iteration, shown here, I start with an f of 0 equals 0, and then at the k plus 1 iteration step, the image is equal to the image that we obtained at the previous iteration, step k plus beta, a relaxation parameter, this phi of f of k. And I can combine everything into this function psi of f of k. This intuitively should make sense. If I have an f of k for which the phi f of k is equal to 0, then clearly f of k plus 1 equals f of k plus beta phi f of k. And since this is 0, this is f of k. So we see that this f of k is a stationary point. I, I cannot move away from it at the next iteration step. I find exactly the same answer. Of course, this does not prove that even if phi has a root that I'm guaranteed to find it by using this iterative algorithm, because this algorithm may or may not converge. And indeed, finding the sufficient conditions for convergence of any iterative algorithm is one very important element. So we're not going to discuss, the, in general, the convergence of an algorithm like this. There are notions such as contraction mapping. So if psi, for example, is a contraction mapping, then I'm guaranteed to find a unique solution of this uh, optimization, in essence, that I'm performing. But we are going to look at the convergence property of an algorithm like this 
uh, when it takes a specific case of interest when I study the image restoration. The algorithm can also incorporate additional knowledge you might have about the image we are restoring, and this can be done with a form here of a constrained operator or a projection operator. So again, we start f of 0 equals 0, then the f tilde at the kth iteration step is the result of taking the image that we obtained at the previous iteration step and projecting it into the set of signals that have this desirable property or imposing this constraint. And then the f at k plus 1, I use here the f tilde, the constrained signal that I obtained at the previous iteration step. So in essence here I have this now function psi that accepts as input the c f of k, the constraint f of k, and here I show for one constrained operator but we con can concatenate multiple such constrained operators. Some examples of this operator is the positivity constraint, or you can think a set of signals that are non-negative and then I project into that set, or an operator that does half rectification, it clips all the negative values of, of a signal or imposes some finite support constraints or some amplitude constraints and so on and so forth. These constraints by and large are non-expansive mappings. So we want to study primarily this iteration and then I'll show an example later with this iteration where C is the positivity constraint. For the image restoration problem we are working with, here is the degradation equation we've been using all along. So the simplest possible way to try to find an f here is to form a phi of f that equals y minus hf. So we want to find the root, we want to find an f so that hf is equal to y. The successive approximations iteration takes the form shown here. It's a rather straightforward iteration to implement. This is independent of the iteration, so is this matrix. So at each iteration, I find the restored image f of k, multiplied with this matrix, add beta y, and this gives me the result of the next iteration step. This is the consideration here without taking into account any properties of h. h can have any structure. We know by now that if the system is linear and spatially invariant, then H is a block circular matrix, and therefore I can take this iteration to the discrete frequency domain as shown here. So all the corresponding quantities are the DFTs of the signals shown in this equ equation. I should mention here that in implementing an iteration like this, the implementation can take place in the discrete frequency domain or in terms of matrices and vectors, or if it's indeed an LSI system, I can carry out convolutions in the spatial domain or use any other implementation tricks, you might say, that make this efficient. We would like now to look at this frequency domain iteration and obtain sufficient conditions for the convergence of the algorithm. We would like now to study the frequency domain iteration we showed in the previous slide. We would like to write the restored image at the kth iteration step at discrete frequencies uv as the product of the restoration filter at the kth iteration step with the DFT of the observed noise and blurred image. So if we follow the steps here of the iteration, we start with an f of 0 equals 0. I drop here the uvs for simplicity. Then f1 it will be simply beta y, f2 is equal to beta y plus 1 minus beta h, f1, and clearly equal to beta y plus 1 minus beta h, beta y, and f3 can be easily found to be equal to this plus 1 minus beta h, beta y plus 1 minus beta h squared beta y. So it's like solving a first order difference equation, and this is indeed a first order difference equation with respect to the index k. 
So we can easily see that the restoration filter at the kth iteration step is equal to this. Since k will go to infinity, for this infinite sum to converge, I have to have that the magnitude of this term here should be strictly less than 1. So this is indeed the sufficient condition for convergence. H here is complex, so if I write H as its real plus J imaginary part and find the magnitude, I see that H should have values inside the circles here, the shaded circle. This is a circle at center 1 over beta and radius 1 over beta, so this is equal to 2 over beta. If H is real and non-negative, then this condition becomes that beta is bounded by this 0 and 2 over h max. Actually, h max is equal to 1 typically because the degradation is normalized. On the other hand, it's clear that if h, let's say it is real, but it goes negative, as is the case, for example, for the frequency response of the filter that introduces the one-dimensional motion blur, it's a sync function, therefore it goes negative, this quantity cannot be satisfied. If I look at the limiting, uh, limiting value of the filter, then as shown here, again, when k goes to infinity, this term here will go to zero because its magnitude is strictly less than one. And then I have for those frequencies that h is different than zero, I obtain the inverse filter, while if h is equal to zero, I obtain k times beta with the generalized inverse, this is zero, this, but therefore this is one of the differences with the generalized inverse filter. A point I would like to make here is that this restoration takes place per frequency component independently. So it is conceivable that the algorithm converges for some frequency and maybe not for others. In any case, this is a sufficient condition for convergence, which tells us that if satisfied, I'm guaranteed convergence. If it's not satisfied, we do not know what will happen. So again, the restoration takes place per frequency co component. For those frequencies that this term 1 minus beta h is small, they will, the convergence will be fast. And for those frequencies that this term is large, the convergence will be slow. So for those frequencies that h is small, I will have slow convergence. These are the high frequencies. And for those frequencies that H is large, low, low frequencies, I'm going to have fast convergence. So low frequencies will be restored faster than high frequencies.